Revenge Films. My name is Jessica Smith. I married into a very wealthy Smith family, and I was living a happy, peaceful life living with them in their giant estate. My husband Michael was an extremely kind and honest man, and he was the husband of my dreams. My mother-in-law and father-in-law were both wonderful people as well. I often heard horror stories about wives being bullied by their mother-in-law, so when it was decided that I was going to marry into the Smith family, I was pretty worried about what was going to happen. I wasn't sure I was going to be accepted in the family. I heard so many stories about mother-in-law and father-in-law changing their attitude. The moment they got married and bullying the daughter-in-law, I was honestly worried. However, after six months of marrying into the family and living with them, they never once harassed me. Not only that, but they were genuinely so kind to me and treated me like their own daughter. Jessica, are you okay? Are you not pushing yourself too much by doing all the cleaning? Please do take it easy. Not at all, ma'am. I'm totally fine. As I would be cleaning the very large house, sometimes Michael's mother would come check on me on time to time like this, and she was very thoughtful of me. The house is so initially large, isn't it? I know there's a lot of guest rooms that are never being used. Anyway, you only need to tend to the rooms that are actually only being used on a daily basis. You can leave the rest. Don't push yourself too much. The Smith house was truly massive. It was exactly as one might imagine out of a movie. A wealthy family mansion in the middle of nowhere surrounded by fields of green. In any large city or even residential town, a house this large would be unthinkable. It felt so nice to be taking such good care of it like this. Back home with my family, I've never felt this warm and comfortable before. I guess this is what a real family must feel like. The reason why I felt like the Smith family was my real family, and I felt this familial love for the first time in my life, was because back home I was never loved by my own parents, and I never fit into my family. My younger sister Karen, who was always an outgoing and talkative girl, was more similar to my parents and got along well with them. However, they also outcast me from the family. I never got along with them, and so being able to marry into the Smith family and live with them like this truly felt like a dream. However, unfortunately, those days suddenly came to a devastating end. On that day, my mother-in-law and father-in-law were headed to a large shopping mall closer to the city just to do some daily shopping. Unfortunately, they never came home that day. We received a phone call from the hospital that they passed away suddenly in a traffic accident. And then the morning of their funeral, the mansion, I don't remember it being this large. As I was cleaning, as I usually did, I couldn't help but let that slip out of my mouth. The house felt even more empty than before, and I felt so small. Even though Mr. and Mrs. Smith were so good to me at the time, in the end, I was never able to get back to them in any way. I couldn't even look after them or do anything to help. I was starting to beat myself over it, and Michael came and tried to cheer me up. Don't be silly, Jessica. Both my mother and my father were so happy to be able to live with you. They really loved you like their own daughter. You've done more than enough, and I know that they're thanking you from above. Michael took me into his arms and gave me a warm hug. As we were embracing, suddenly we heard a large banging sound from the front entrance, and the glass door was being aggressively forced open. Without a call or even ringing the doorbell whatsoever, I couldn't believe that somebody would just barge into the house like this in such an aggressive manner. And then I realized who it was, and I was even more furious. Just as I thought, it's a uselessly large house. I wonder how much it's going to amount for if they put it up for sale. And the land, too? Mmm... It's probably not going to be that much. It's way out here in the middle of nowhere anyway. I can't imagine this area is worth anything. On the morning of Mr. and Mrs. Smith's funeral service, I heard the rude and careless voices of a man and woman. And there was no doubt these were the voices that belonged to my sister Karen and her husband Chad. This is so stupid. You know there are a lot of stupid people these days who actually live out here in the middle of nowhere. It's so dumb. As soon as we heard the loud crash at the front door, Michael and I rushed over at the entrance of the house. And standing there was my little sister grinning from ear to ear with her shoes already off and inside the house. Karen, what are you doing here? And with your husband, too. Oh, Jessica, I came here to help you. You're welcome. But you know, wow, what an amazing house. It's even bigger than I thought. It must be nice to live here. Kevin's eyes were shimming around, as if she was rummaging through the belongings of the deceased. You know, lately, I feel I need money for all kinds of things, especially since my parents just decided to die out of nowhere. Now I can't even get allowance from them, and I'm able to have kids now. Even though Karen was already a grown adult and was married, she was still receiving allowance from every single month from our parents. On the other hand, I was told by my parents to send money to them every single month. Even though we had already been treated differently ever since we were kids, the degree in which they treated me so poorly was awful. So Jessica, do you really want to sell this house? I actually know a pretty good real I'm pretty sure he would buy it off of you for a pretty good price. What do you say? And then you could give me the introductory fee. There's no way I'm going to sell this house. This house belongs to my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and... 
Please, come on, they're already dead. Why don't you just sell this place and then you can rent the apartment in the city and just live there. As for a broker, free. I'll give you a discount for a family-friendly introduction. There's no way. And first of all, every single time that I see you, all you talk about is money and ask for money. Even all the money of my parents were forcing me to send it to them every single month. That was just being used for your allowance, wasn't it? First thing in the morning, I ended up having to get into a bigger argument with the sister, but we still had to attend the funeral in honor. Mr. and Mrs. Smith and a few hours later, the funeral concluded. However, when Karen and her husband were about to leave, my sister then made an explosive remark. Oh, that reminds me. I am actually decided to get a scheduled C-section for my baby. And guess what? It's going to be tomorrow. I bet it's going to be a reincarnation of the dead grandpa and grandma. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> A scheduled C-section? That's right, that's right. You know, when it comes to C-sections, there are two patterns. The first one is a scheduled C-section, and the other is an emergency C-section. When it's an emergency C-section, you don't get to decide on the day of the surgery. But when it's a scheduled C-section, you get to decide what day. So that's why I try to get it as close as possible to the day of the old man and old lady died. Do you get it? <laughs> why would you do such a thing? Because it's funny, isn't it? Oh, Jessica, what's wrong with you? Your face is getting red and then going pale and it keeps changing colors. But of course you're going to give me celebratory money for the giving birth and congratulate me, aren't you? Oh, I have a great idea. Maybe it'd be funny if we name our kids after the two people that just died. How oh, perfect, because they're actually twins. Uh, I'll be waiting for you to tell me congratulations. Can't wait. Those are the last words I heard from Karen and her husband disappeared. As much as I was furious at her, at the same time, I couldn't congratulate my little sister for giving birth, especially since the babies were about to be my niece and nephew. Even though we were devastated from the loss of his parents and what just happened, Michael and I went to the hospital where Karen was going to give birth the next day. When I handed her the envelope with congratulatory money in it, Karen immediately opened it and started counting the cash in front of us. Ugh, you're so cheap. I can't believe you only put $200 in there. By the way, the boy and girl that I just give birth to it's definitely a recognition of your mother-in-law and father-in-law so you better give us some inheritance excuse me are you being serious if you're going to refuse well then let's see maybe i will seriously name them after your mother-in-law and father-in-law that are dead are you trying to threaten us the one-year memorial the three-year memorial every single time you have to memorial service to commemorate their death it's going to be close to the birthday of the children that you're going to have to say happy birthday and celebrate and on top of that you're gonna to have to call them by their names of the old man and dead old woman that's so hilarious i'm a genius karen was cackling if you don't want then you better pay us our big sis who what how dare you! Just as Karen and I were about to get into a huge argument, Karen's mother-in-law and father-in-law arrived at the hospital room. I don't know how long they had been standing there for, but then they looked troubled. Uh -uh. Karen immediately started to turn pale. My sister-in-law was very good at being a wolf in sheep's clothing and putting on the act of a nice girl, so it seemed that her mother-in-law and father-in-law hadn't realized her true nature until the very moment. K karen what did you say? How could you do something so awful? This is what it looks like! Ma'am, it's a misunderstanding! Karen was desperately trying to defend herself, and so I confronted her because I knew that this was my opportunity to expose her. What about this is a misunderstanding? First thing in the morning on the day of the funeral, you barge into the house and try to sell us the land and sell the house. Well, well, well that's just... And on top of that, you purposely scheduled the C-section date as close to the day of the passing as you could. And a cherry on top, you also were going to name your twins after Mr. and Mrs. Smith that just passed away. And you're going to blackmail us unless we give you some of the inheritance. You're the worst. I I'm sorry, it was just a little dog. <laughs> Please forgive me. Karen apologized, but there was no way that I was going to forgive her. And I didn't say a word as Michael and I stormed out of the hospital room. A couple days later... Karen and her husband showed up at the front door of the mansion again, but this time looking terribly run down. But it was easy for me to imagine why. They suddenly gave birth to twins. I'm sure they had their hands full trying to raise children while also earning enough money to support the whole family. But that's so surprised because not only was Karen receiving financial support from our parents, even after graduating from high school and becoming an adult, apparently she was also receiving money from the in-laws. Ever since we were little kids, she was getting more than enough allowance, and even when she became an adult, she was still getting allowance and never actually had to work or earn money for herself. Karen had never had a proper part-time job, and her husband had a very similar lazy personality to her, and he was definitely not the type to actually try to work hard at all. I could only imagine the two of them trying to raise a child. 
would be more than a handful. In reality, Karen probably should have been able to rely on her husband's parents to help her. But after the incident and they saw in the hospital room, apparently they told her that they were going to rethink their support and denied helping her. Just a please, can you come look after the kids? There's no way I can look after twins all by myself. You know I haven't been able to have a single night of sleep. Miss Jessica, please! I want to ask you too! The babies are so loud crying all night! I haven't been able to get any sleep! And I can't focus on my work! It's driving me crazy! That's none of my business. On the day of the funeral when you said such awful things, I also couldn't sleep because of how angry and sad I was. You're not going to get any sympathy from me. F fine, at least give me some money. You're always sending money to our parents anyway. So just give me a couple hundred dollars and you are sending them every month. That should be easy, right? Obviously, there's no way that I would give that to you. But we're family, aren't you? I'm your little sister. My name is Jessica Smith. I am a member of the Smith family. The reason why I was sending money every month to our parents like, like that was because they told me to. Because I did feel like I had to give back to them for at least raising me. But I have nothing to give back to you because it's not like you raised me, Karen. You've done nothing for me. I let it all out. Now that I am part of the Smith family. So that's why I have a responsibility to protect this house and the land that stands on it. Get out! I stood my ground so firmly that Karen couldn't reply to the pressure. And she and her husband retreated out of the house. And then a few days after that, once again, Karen and her husband showed up at the doorstep of the Smith Mansion, looking even worse than they did last time. Jessica, we're so lucky to be blessed with such a nice mother-in-law and father-in-law. Well, that's why you don't understand. You don't understand the struggle I have, having to deal with such an awful mother and father-in-law. So this time she's going to come try crying to me. It's exactly as Karen says. I don't mean to speak poorly of my own parents, but... Then Karen and her husband went on to talk about how awful her husband's parents were. Even though they had been receiving so much financial support from them uh, from all the time. When I pulled out the cell phone and started to press record, I recorded the whole thing. And because I had Chaz's number's phone number, I sent the voice recording to them. About 30 minutes later, my phone rang this time. Oh, what's a call for you guys? Karen and Chad, looks like there's something that they want to talk to you about. I said nonchalantly as I handed the phone over with a plain expression on my face. Hi, who is it? Karen had a lost look on her face as she slowly took out the phone out of my hand and raised it to her ear. And then even standing across from them, far from the cell phone, Chad's mother's voice screaming on the other end of the phone echoed throughout the mansion. Karen was so shaken up that her knees buckled and she fell to the ground. Any mother in the world, especially a mother-in-law, is truly terrifying if you anger them. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.